All right, hello everybody. All right, so uh, let's get some do now work in and kind of work through today's you know lesson. We're hit on two things, and uh, you know try your best work on the you know the things we talk about today. And then when I see you all uh, Wednesday, we'll perfect things. Friday, we'll keep practicing and reviewing. And then next Tuesday, we'll take our exam. So we'll be fine. All right, so do now. A, B, C. A is 30 degrees, 4, 8. All right, so I'm solving for angle A, angle B, angle C, A, B, C. All right, so getting this going. My only option here is 4 over sine 30 equals 8 over sine B. Now, I keep getting asked the question, you know, does it matter if you have the angles on the bottom or the angles on top? No, it doesn't matter. As long as you're consistent with your work, you'll be fine. All right, so if I cross multiply, I got 4 sine B equals 8 sine 30, which gives me sine B equals 8 sine 30 all over 4. All right now, this gives me some decimal number, which is fine. And the, what we have to do here is if we're solving for an angle, we have to do the inverse. So by taking that decimal number, plugging in here, it gives us 90 degrees. All right, so this is the same path we take every single time. All right, so we have to work through this and then we have to take our inverse. Inverse gives us the angle and that's true all the time. All right, so I got angle A is 30, angle B is 90, that leaves angle C to be 60 degrees. All right, and A is 4, B is 8, and what is C? Well, guess what? Even though we weren't told right away, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. A, B, C. And with our 30, 60, 90 triangle, we have our rules where, well, this definitely ain't what the 30, 60, 90 looks like, so I'm gonna fix that for a second. All right, so we got that, change that, change that, make it look a little bit more uniform. All right, so A, there's my 30, there's my 60. All right, so if A is four, this is eight, this is four at three. And this holds up. If you type in your calculator, four divided by sine of 30, that should be the exact same as eight divided by sine of 90, which should be the exact same thing as four red three over sine 60. All, right. All three of those should be the exact same thing every single time. All right, so all of them, will they be? All of them equal eight, All right, sine 90, yeah, eight, eight, eight. They all mathematically make sense. All right, so now jumping down here, this problem, not a 30, 60, 90. A, B, C, 112 degrees, 4, 3. So we're only set up 4 over sine 112, 3 over sine B. Cross, multiply, and solve, then divide. 3 sine 112 over 4. Sine B equals 3 sine 112 divided by 4.695, blah, 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 blah. I do the inverse. The inverse gives me 44.06 degrees. All right, so angle A is 112. Angle B is 44.06 degrees. We subtract from 180. 44.06 minus 112. And we have 23.94 degrees. Right, so I got all my angles. But last but not least, I need to find that side C. So C over sine of 23.94 equals 4 over sine 112. Now I always use the given ratio because I know that ratio is correct. 
If I chose to use 44.06 to find side C, right? if 44.06 was wrong, then C is never going to be right. right. So if I cross multiply and divide, I get C equals 4 sine 23.94 divided by sine 112, side C is 1.75. Right, so I got all three angles, all three sides. Right, so hopefully that's a little bit of a review for all of you. All right, so now getting into some new stuff. So bringing back some old ideas. When we were taking geometry a few years ago, we talked about things that prove congruent. So we had like side, side, side. We had angle, side, angle. We had side, angle, side. We had angle, angle, side. But the one that proved nothing congruent was angle side side. And now that has meaning today for what we're doing. Now another, you know, another two key things. In a triangle, the longest side is always opposite the largest angle. And the smallest side is always opposite the smallest angle. Last but not least, triangle 180 degrees. All right, so when is there no triangle? We got three situations here. All right, problem one, 140 degrees, three, 10. Why is this not a triangle? Well, if A is 140 degrees, angle C plus angle B has to be 40 degrees. So the issue is that the largest side is not across from largest angle. All right? So no matter what, angle B has to be less than 140 degrees. So this is not a triangle because the largest side is not across from the largest angle. All right, this one. All right, issue. What do we have here? Two million degrees physically can't make a triangle if two of the angles add to 201 degrees. Not going to happen. Example three. All right, well, right away, I don't see anything yet. A is 76 degrees, B is 20, A is 5. Right, so initial idea, no real issue. 5 over sine 76 equals 20 over sine b. Cross multiply and divide. Sine b equals 20, sine 76 divided by five. Sine b equals, let's get the number, 20 sine 76 divided by five. I got 3.88. Inverse of that equals error. Right, so the issue is that the numbers we have physically can't make a triangle. Right, and from just looking at this problem, we may not notice it. But imagine if I told you like side A was 10, side B was 1, side C was 2. Right, so hey, you got a triangle. The three sides are 10, 1, and 2. All right, well, if this is 10, this is 1, this is 2. It is physically impossible to connect those together to actually make a triangle. Right, so for this, you know, hey, yeah, we could think about it and we see that's not going to happen. Right, but this, you know, it may not be as obvious. So we got to use our calculator to mathematically figure out and prove, hey, those numbers, they just don't work. It's never going to happen. Right, so the fact that we get an error there, that's telling us we don't have a triangle. Uh, so with triangles, we got three options in these problems. We could have zero triangles. We could have one triangle. And the last idea is we could have two triangles. Uh, so that's throwing a real wrench at people. So let's get this problem going. So if we had ABC... 
38.7 degrees, 172, 203. Angle A, I'm gonna, oops, I don't put that there. Angle A, angle B, angle C, A, B, C. So A is 172, C is 203, angle A is 38.7, and now we can take some time and solve. So 172 over sine 38.7 equals 203 over sine C. Cross multiply and divide. Sine C equals 203 sine 38.7 over 172. Inverse sine of whatever decimal this whole thing gives us, and we get our answer to be 47.56 degrees. All right, so angle C is 47.56 degrees. All right, and we can find angle B because 180 minus 38.7 minus 47.56 gives us 93.74 degrees. All right, if we have to finish this off, we can solve for side B by 172 over sine 38.7 equals B over sine 93.74. We cross multiply we divide, we get that B is 274.5. And we're done. All right, we feel good. We got our answer. We're done. All right, so here's where the trick comes in. All right, understanding how our calculators work. If you type into your calculator, sine 20, you get... 0.342. If you type in sine 160, you get 0.342. Same thing. But if you do the inverse of 0.342, you will always get 20 degrees. You will never get 160. Why is that? It gives you the reference angle. 20 degrees is the reference angle for 160. 160 is okay. But we're not going to get that from our calculator. The calculator always gives you the reference angle. Same thing with 40. 0.643 for sine 40. 0.643 for sine 140. If we do the inverse, we get 40 degrees. We're never going to get 20 degrees. All right, so we're not going to get 20 degrees. We're not going to get 140 degrees. We're not going to get 160 degrees. But 40 is the reference angle for 140. 20 is the reference angle for 160. So we have to consider here is that if we were given 20 degrees, 180 minus 20 gives us that 160, and they're the same thing. 180 minus 40 gives us the 140, and they're the same thing. So with our problem up top, using, example, using angle C, if we change it up, 180, minus 47.56, we get 132.44 degrees. So it is possible that there is another triangle out there because when we do the inverse, we only get the reference angle. So we have A was set in stone, A and B were set in stone. And so those stay the same, but now if we change this up and have a new angle C of 132.44, we can set this problem up a little bit differently. Right, so A can't change, but C just changed, and know what? 180 minus 38.7 minus 132.44 we could have a new angle B of 8.86. This stays as 172 
This day is a 2 of 3, and we have to solve for B. So our setup for B would be 172 over sine 38.7 equals B over sine 8.86. Cross multiply, divide. Our new angle B is 172 sine 8.86 divided by sine 38.7, 42.37. So understanding this, it's possible to get one setup, and it's possible to get another setup. And the issue is because the calculator only gives reference angle. It will never give you a larger angle than 90. It always gives you that reference angle in the situation. So we need a rule. All right? What is the rule that we're going to stick with? Here's the rule I have. This is the rule I always go with. All right? If you start by solving an angle, if you start by solving for an angle, if the new angle is larger than the given angle, there are two triangles. If you start by solving for an angle, if the new angle is larger than the given angle, there are two triangles. And that is the key rule that we're going to go by. So if we go to this example down here, All right, let's get it going. A, B, C, 63.16, 17, 18. 17 over sine, 63.16 equals 18 over sine B. All right, so we cross multiply. We got 18 sine, 63.16 divided by 17. We take that decimal, plug it in here, we get our inverse, and we get 70.87. All right, here's the key rule. 70.87 is larger than 63.16. So for this problem here, two triangles. And that's because 70.87 is larger than 63.16. So triangle one, Angle A is 63.16. Angle B is 70.87. Angle C is 180 minus 63.16 minus 70.87 is 45.97. Side A is 17. Side B is 18. And we got to solve for side C. Right, so taking a moment for that, 17 over sine. 63.16 equals C over sine 45.97. Cross multiply, I divide, I get 13.69. There's triangle one. All right, for our second triangle, everything that stayed the same before comes across. A is 63.16, 17, and 18. Now, to find angle B, 180 minus 70.87, our second option for angle B is 109.13 degrees. Nope, don't want to raise. Right, angle C would be 180 minus 63.16 minus 109.13 and that gives us 7.71 degrees. Okay, so that's how we find our new two angles. To solve for C, I'd have 17 over sine 63.16 equals C over sine 7.71. 
cross multiply and solve Let's see 2.56 So this is what happens, right? It's not overly insane. There's multiple pieces going on at once, but the key rule, since 70.87 was larger than 63.16, there are two triangles. So, again, making sure we hit on this idea. Right? 180 minus 70.87 gives us the new angle B. To find angle C, we take the only angle A and the new angle B to get angle C. All right, example here. A, B, C, 87, 11, 8. 11 over sine 87 equals 8 over sine C. Cross multiply, sine C equals 8, sine 87 divided by 11. The inverse of this decimal gives me... 46.58 46.58 is smaller than 87 one triangle All right the fact that it's smaller than 87 means there's only one triangle so angle a angle b is 87 angle c is 46.58 180 minus 46.58 minus 87 gives me 46.42 degrees. A, B, C. B is 11. C is 8. We can go 11 over sine 87 equals A over sine of 46.42. We cross multiply and solve. When we cross multiply and solve, we get A is 7.98. And then we're done. One triangle because the first angle we got is smaller than the angle we're given. Now, if you start a law of sines problem out and you find a side right away, there's only one triangle. Now, this only occurs if you solve for an angle first.